and last couple of years have, have been a firm reminder of the important role played by public administrations and in general of institutional preparedness and the ability to react, to react quickly to whatever it takes. Eh? So uh, the tragic events in Ukraine unfortunately again confirm that our institutions and administrations cannot afford uh, to stay still. The nature of the challenges we face and the acceleration of events demand a trial, nimble and efficient public services. Public administrations played a key role during the pandemic. We, call, we all witnessed it. From vaccine rollout and emergency health care to emergency business support, digital solutions for school, digital solutions for work. While we were just on the path of recovery, we woke up two weeks ago to a Europe that had fundamentally changed overnight. Due to the brutal aggression of Russia against Ukraine, every day, hundreds of thousands of people are fleeing the war across European Union borders. We already have about two million, and some estimates anticipate up to eight million. We don't know. You responded in unity and determination to sanction Russia, Russian's aggression, support the Ukrainian people, and now welcoming the refugees fleeing from the conflict. All this requires an additional effort of the national public administrations in a variety of areas, such as logistics, education, childcare facilities, and labor market integration. Public administrations will also play a key role, especially as we move to a green and digital economy. They will need to create and manage renewable energy systems, green transport systems, and energy efficient, re uh, uh, and energy efficient renovation. We will need new ways of town planning, innovate mobility, digital schooling, and the e-public administration. And we need public administrations that can effectively manage large investment funds and comprehensive reforms, such as those in the recovery and resilience facility, and set the framework and incentives for a thorough green and digital transformation of businesses and households to face all these new challenges. Public administration will need a broad range of new skills and the new competences. But now, will they acquire these new skills and new competencies? How will they do it? As you know, the technical support instrument is the Commission's main instrument to support reforms and the quality of public administration in the Member States. We help them rise to the challenges of reforms reforms for fairness and reforms for efficiency, reforms linked to the green and digital transitions, and reforms linked to the national recovery and resilience plans. It is no exaggeration to say that the technical support instrument is the technical support for the recovery plan for Europe. It is also cohesion for public administrations, ensuring that all of them are up to the tasks ahead and that no administration is left behind. Today, the Commission adopted the 2022 Annual Work Programme of the Technical Support Instrument. It is the second annual programme for this instrument. <coughs> In the last year, <coughs> excuse me, we have uh, intensified our support and our response to current challenges by launching an expert group on public administration and governance, and moreover, we are going to implement an exchange program for civil servants to enable European civil servants to have direct experience of the way others work, to transfer knowledge and good practices, and to improve good governance. And this year, we have selected more ambitious reforms in terms of breadth of the projects. For the 2022 round, we have selected 225 requests from all 25 member states. 115 requests, so 52% of the total requests selected, contribute to the digital transition. These projects target issues such as e-governance, smart cities, 
a Digital Finance Academy, and the digital transformation of healthcare. Cybersecurity has become key to tackle global threat. The technical support instrument is supporting member states in assessing emerging cyber threats and reducing systemic cyber risks for our economy and society. A further 80 requests, so 36% of the total selected, contributed to the European Green Deal. These projects include issues such as green budgets, green taxes, sustainable tourism, support to the renovation wave, and clean, smart, and fair urban mobility. Reducing our dependence on oil, gas, and coal, investing in renewable energy, improving energy efficiency, these are the long-term solutions to surging energy prices and supply disruptions. By achieving the green transition, not only will Europe be a better place to live for future generations, it will also reduce our dependencies on third countries. However, this transition should be just for all workers and regions, ensuring no one will be left behind, actually. With the recovery and resilience plans in place, many technical support projects are linked to this. This year, 128 requests, so 57% of the total selected, are linked to the implementation of the recovery and resilience plans. In addition, there are many multi-country and multi-regional reform initiatives. These facilitate exchanges between member states. In particular, 52 requests are supporting local authorities and regions, and 10 local authorities are benefiting directly from the technical support. These requests are a mark of our success. We are moving beyond support to a national administration, to include networks of administrations, and to include subnational administrations. For example, six countries will work together on a microdata platform for productivity, which will provide better evidence for tailoring of reforms, which boost productivity and competitiveness. Three countries will work together to build a EU, EU health resource hub that will support member states to get the right EU funding for the right plans at the right time. A further seven countries will work together on risk analysis for money laundering and banking supervision. And seven countries will be supported in improving the integration of migrants, in particular in the education system and labor market. We are ready to extend this project to other countries that might face such needs as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. You can read about all these examples and many, many more in the press material that uh, we have published today. With this new round of technical support instrument, once again, we send a clear message to all member states and regions. We stand by you in these difficult times and we will do what it takes to help you succeed. This is the spirit of Europe, standing together in crisis and building a better future together for the next generation. So thank you once again. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner.